Okay. All right. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just want to break out in the Star Spangled Banner after I do that. You go right oh, ahead. Yeah. <laughs> that will really drive the viewership up. <laughs> All right. We have manifest. You do. Uh, I told Sam to be here at 7. He uh, didn't get it all together today. But, um, do you want to make the motion? That's your signature file. This is your mail file. Um, this is stuff. You, you can get to that in a minute. You don't have okay. to do that right. now. So we'll do that first. Okay. Do you want to make the motion? Make the motion to... Just sorry. read it right there. Oh. Motion to approve accounts payable manifest for April 11, 2016 and payroll manifest of April 12, 2016. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We just need to sign them. Is this anything we need to be, uh, we need to discuss? Uh, no, it's an invitation to go chat with the county commission if you are interested. Uh, county services, centralized purchasing? Yes. They did one of these last year. Uh, Is that, oh, they, that's the last ones. Um, changes to the invoice of postage. Oh, right, right, right. Do you need us to initialize this? Uh, which one is that? The edit list or is that the... It's the little that's a... Nope. Okay. It's the manifest that matters. Okay. All right. Uh, approve outstanding minutes. We had minutes from April 4th. I sent in some edits. Yeah, I make a motion to approve. I'll second. <coughs> um, any discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I will abstain. So two in favor and one abstain. Okay. Hey. Uh, let's do uh, reports from um, planning boards and committees. Budget meet. No. no. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the planning board, I, I wasn't there, but I watched it on TV. Um, so they had three cases before them. One case, um, which was a back, backlog uh, subdivision, was approved with conditions. And then the two other cases are, will be continued to the next meeting. And those two cases were one on a uh, five lot um, subdivision on Smoke Street. And then uh, open space development on Flutter. So they're both being continued. Okay. So, <clears throat> and other than that, there wasn't anything else. It was okay. busy. Oh, and the scenic roads. So Eversource, because Eversource is going to cut down some trees on scenic right. roads. Yeah. And they hadn't sent the um, information clearly um, to the planning board. So the Eversource person came. Right. Um, it was discussed and it was approved or, or the planning board. Okay. There was no public um, that showed up. But, okay. Um, so now Eversource will notify the um, landowners and they'll do the trimming and cutting on those scenic roads. Okay. Uh, that's it for boards and committees. Town report. Uh, it's not a whole lot of excitement. We um, we replaced that sewer pipe out here last week, um, which all went well. It's all buttoned up, paved over, bang, 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 bang. Uh, seems to be working. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna give it a couple weeks and see if that solves our problems before we replace the toilets. But that's the next step if we if we need to. Um, 
been good so far. Um, and we think we're going to get by with uh, the, the stuff that's under the building. We think that's, that's what we're we're going to learn now. Um, you know, we when we ran the camera through it, we saw that the the end of the pipe was the worst, uh, which is out the outside part, which is great. Um, it's always an adventure trying to figure out where things are here. We don't have drawings for anything, and right. it, it actually took some work to figure out what was coming from where. Uh, but we think we know what's what, and uh, it was laid out nicely, and we now have clean outs that we can reach from the outside. Okay. Um, and uh, easy access to, to it, so um, I think it all, all's well on that front uh, so far. Did we do the replacement of the flagpole at the same time? The, uh, well, we, had, we, uh, we rented the excavator to do this work, so we pulled the flagpole out up at the square. Uh, the highway guys pulled the old one out, and we're hiring somebody to come in and put the new one in. Okay. Uh, I think that's probably late next week. I haven't got a hard time from now on that yet. Um, but uh, there's a hole in the ground up there waiting for a new, okay. new pole. Okay. Um, uh, on Marston, you and I haven't talked about Marston in a couple of weeks, but um, um, we're going tomorrow to Ironwood, um, and uh, we're going to kind of pick their brain on that move the field option and okay. see see what they explored. You and Matt, Matt and uh, Barry. Um, Got it. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, anyway, civil engineer uh, okay. in town uh, okay. who's going to help out. Um, and uh, Jeff over there was happy to, you know, help us. So um, okay. we're going to kind of, well, Matt and I have talked and, you know, we really have to get through this. Are we going to think about moving the fields or are we going to move forward with what we've got? We have to clear that hurdle right. first yeah. uh, and hope to make a lot of progress on that tomorrow uh, right. or Wednesday. I'm not sure which day it is. Um, so we're moving on that as fast as we can. Um, that's the that really will tell us a lot about our next steps. And we're kind of stuck until we know the answer to that question. Um, and hopefully, they, Ironwood thought through it all and can spell it all out for us. I don't know that MPEC went into that level of detail. It was kind of too late in the game that that came up. So that's where we are with that. Um, and I think. That is it. I will have uh, later this week. I'll have a first quarter budget update for you. Okay, I was um, ask that. Um, my first pass at it. It looks good. We, you know, obviously, we had a relatively easy winter, um, so uh, we're overall we're in good shape. I'll break it down for you more than that, but um, good good first quarter. Um, new police cruisers on the way. Um, uh, there's another thing I should should have done in non-public that I will do offline with you. Um, not a big thing, but um, I think that's it. Uh, I've I've been sidetracked on the reaching out to individuals regarding the fun, uh, leading the fundraising side of the Marston. I will do that in the next two weeks. Um, yeah, Matt's had feelers out to the guard and the reserve and the you know the, all those. You know, we're we're starting to get a sense of what that process looks like for getting okay. big big earth moving help. Yeah. Um, it's too early to to know much, but yeah. Started making those phone calls and feeling out that process. Um, okay. And I think that's it. Okay. What do you need us to pay attention to? In here? Okay, so in there you have uh, you have. A update for the state on who the elected officials are. Sandy produces that report, and you have to sign it. it. Says who all the elected officials are and everything, and goes into the big database in the sky. Okay. Um, there is uh, something from Chief Foss there to accept uh, a grant for a new hazard mitigation plan. We had budgeted for an update to that, um, and. <coughs> We have to hire somebody to do the work, but uh, this is the first step in getting the, the grant portion of it. Looks like it's going to cost us about two grand plus some time. Uh, we budgeted five, so we're in great shape there. Um, and there's, I think that one has like 12 signatures and initials on it, so 
flip through that. Okay. Uh, you have a couple of rate changes for uh, firefighter EMTs. Um, the, you two haven't seen these yet. This process, you'll see a, a, a long history for some, a shorter history for others of their their weight, uh, rate, their wage history. Uh, and that is backed up with their performance evaluation uh, from their department head. Uh, and that's typically what I have given to the board. Um, and then also in there is a stack of letters from kids over at the school that the school board forwarded along. There was a class project to write to the school that's board awesome. about something. Um, and there's, I don't know, a dozen letters or so there. Most of them concerned about the number and quality of our playing fields, but also a few other issues. Uh, I took the liberty of drafting some responses for you. If you're happy with them, you can sign them or you can write your own. Okay. Uh, okay. You, uh, you're, you're more than welcome to, uh, to redo those if you'd like to get into more. That is, yes, you're That's signing right, there. Uh, is this one have, um, yes, that is it there. And then this one has a bunch of initials. This one has a bunch of signatures and things. All right, so one line, I just put my name in. Yep, it that's it. <clears throat> uh, oh, we're, oh, I didn't forget to mention, we're also creeping forward with the demolition of those two properties. Um, we have to get the power pulled down, power lines pulled down. That's going to happen next week, and then we'll move to demolition on uh, Freeman Hall and Rogier. And okay. Plants have been removed. Oh, they have. Okay, good. Yeah. In fact, I've got to contact um, the flagpole people to see if they want to use any of those plants. Oh, okay. Uh, I can connect you with uh, Shannon Taylor. She's kind of the caretaker of that flagpole, if you want. Yeah. Okay. So we're sub sub recipient one, two, and three. You, yes. You. And the so three of you are one, two, and three. Then name and title. Yep. Of us, and I will do the notary portion that okay. is also in yellow. Would you be David by chance? Yeah. Okay. Thought so, but I, I'm Chris. If we hadn't, okay. I know we've met, but I. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wow, there's a lot of signatures. Yeah, it's the state government. You got to get through governor and council and uh, seven bureaucrats and two lawyers along the way. Did you already, did you already sign this? Yeah, all you have to do is initialize this. Initial that? Yeah. You can take that whole pile with you if you want. Don't I? Can I? Yeah. Okay, that yeah. would be great. Yeah. You know, bring them back. We'll, we'll deliver them, whatever, whatever you. I, I'd like to do that. I'd like to take the time to read all of those. 
if you want some letterhead, whatever you, however you want to. Okay. Great. You know, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll send you a, a letterhead template, word template, and you can just, you should have it anyway. But okay. Um, Yeah, actually, one of them brought a problem to my attention that I wasn't aware of, so that was pretty cool. But uh, hmm? I haven't done oh, that okay. yet. Nope. Do one of us usually go to that? Okay. I mean, if you have a burning passion for it and you want to, you know, you're welcome to. For the county thing? Yeah. yeah. yeah we're, we're a caboose on that train anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. No, this is, this is the second one. Oh. Another. <clears throat> So uh, this is David Vale from uh, Southeast New Hampshire Land Trust. If you want to skip to B on your agenda, you can yep. do sweet, sir. Yep. Uh, and no, uh, Sam was not coming? Or? I, well, I saw Sam today, and I thought he was coming. Uh, and we talked about 7 o'clock, so. Uh, okay. Come on up. Hey, David. So I think Charlene, you had some. I had, yeah, kind of two. Um, actually, anybody got my email? I do, uh, and I think I sent it to you too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, a couple of questions there, and mm -hmm. I mean, not. I don't want to hold up the process, but. Um, yeah. uh, good questions. I'm happy to talk about them. Um, so I'll just kind of go through as I think they were laid out in the mm -hmm. email. Mm -hmm. um, the first one being a question regarding um, alteration of interior on buildings within the easement area. And so that language uh, is language that's part of um, the easement that comes from the model from the NRCS, uh, which is the, you know, the Natural Resource Conservation Service Program we're using. Um, so we, we're kind of stuck with that language, so to speak. We can't alter that. Um, but what it means, essentially, is that if there's a, a building built within the conservation easement, um, and in order to have a building in the conservation easement, it has to be, first of all, within a, a certain uh, building envelope area, which has been uh, laid out on the survey plan. Right. And, and that's to minimize impact on the soils and the scenic views and all that. And then 
the construction of that building has to be for the allowed uses of things like agriculture, uh, conservation, et cetera. So it's for new, any, any new buildings. So I guess that was my, I, I was thinking it was for like existing buildings that, you know, like the, if there's a dairy barn there and um, it so could, it's- It could be, like say for example, you know, next year there's an agricultural barn built there, but then 50 years from now, the new owner of the land uh, wants to use it for antique car storage or something. Their commercial uh, or industrial uses of that building would be permitted under certain circumstances. It couldn't have a negative impact on the agricultural use of the property. Um, and if they were to make alterations to the exterior of the building, um, there's going to be a judgment call there on what's a substantial change. Um, and then is NRCS the one that makes that judgment call? Well, it'll be Southeast Land Trust staff in coordination with NRCS. Okay. Uh, because it is their language, we're going to rely probably pretty heavily on their guidance on that. And it, so it's a little bit subjective. Okay. Um, but the nice thing, too, is, uh, you know, that's that term is really focused specifically for buildings that are within the conservation easement area. And there's already... Uh, an area left out of the conservation easement around the existing home and the existing barn. Um, so, and there's more space there. So if, if a future landowner wants to have a structure and they're, and they're worried about that term, um, they have that area within the excluded area to work with. Um, it seemed vague, that's why I was... <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit... It seemed a very bit. subjective, so I was yep. like... <clears throat> Yep, it's, it's not um, language that we have in, in CELTS model easements, but because we're going through this funding source. Right, for NRCS. Yeah, you know, we have to use that language. Um, and then, the, is that adequate for that? Um, and then your next question was regarding the, the mineral rights of any third parties. Um, so we have done title search on the property to make sure it's clear and marketable, and that has not turned up any uh, you know, mineral rights by third parties. Um, what I think what we can do is add something in there. Uh, I think akin to what you were suggesting, a statement that basically says, you know, there's nothing. There's nothing there that we're aware of at this time. And then, you know, if something pops up that for some reason the title search missed or something in the future, then these these terms in the easement will apply to that. And that's something that I can draft and send to the town attorney and, and have folks look at before it's um, finalized. So I'm happy to, to put that in there. Um, you had also asked about uh, commercial water withdrawal, yeah, which is a good question. So that is uh, restricted uh, through one of the clauses that talks about surface alteration. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it, it specifically within that term, it talks about surface or subsurface water systems. Um, and so commercial uh, withdrawal would not be allowed under the, the terms of this easement. I looked at water resource mapping also, and there's our water resource mapping doesn't show any uh, aquifers or any potential. So I think the risk would be extremely low, even if it were allowed, but in this case, it's not going to be allowed. I think that was it. Um, the other question that I had, um, <clears throat> David, and, and, and I think that th this is not so much for, for this easement, but um, you know, that's a fairly large parcel of land, right? So when that does go on the market, once the, the current landowners sell it, and, and it does have agricultural use on it, um, it's going to be pretty prohibitive for you know a new farmer to come on and purchase that. So I was wondering. I mean, have you has Salt looked at options for you know purchase at ag value for such easements or? Yeah, I mean it's something that we're we we have proposed to some you know landowners that we work with. Um, it's a it's a new tool in New Hampshire. It's being used a lot in Massachusetts. Uh, so I think it's something that we'll we'll see more of. Um, 
you know, this it, it may not be a, an expensive property for an agricultural farmer. It, it depends on what the landowners want to try and sell the property for. I mean, I mean, they are getting, they are restricting the development rights, so that in and of itself is going to, you know, if, if they have an appraisal, will impact the appraised value there. Um, and, you know, it's one of our, our goals is to really help make connections uh, between landowners and, and folks who are seeking farmland. And I think that the Sweetser family would like to see it continued uh, in agricultural use. So, um, it, you know, we're working to try and make that happen. But we obviously can't control yeah. who it winds up by. Yeah. Um, so going back to the, the language that you can add for regarding the mineral rights, I, mean, I don't want to hold up the process for, to add one sentence. I think it's a pretty, pretty easy tweak. Um, so I don't think it's going to hold us up, honestly. I can, I can run it by, um, you know, the town attorney, and if, if they approve it, fine, and we'll run up the flagpole to NRCS. Small changes like that, you know, aren't um, significant, so. I mean, how long would it, that take? I mean, I think you've got a, you, you were expecting kind of May kind of to wrap that, this yeah. all up. Yeah. I mean, I think depending on what, you know, the town schedule, we could probably turn it around between us pretty quick, and then we send it into NRCS, and their system is, you know, it, it can take a while, which is why we're looking at May, June, but a change of that nature isn't going to make or break a long time period there. So. I mean, what do, you, what do you folks think? I mean, it's, it's <clears throat> so it's in relation to that there's currently, the, there's the stipulation that you can't, you know, mine, right? Mm -hmm. And so they've, they've, you know, done the research. Yeah. And there's nobody currently doing that. Adding this sentence is just gonna, gonna say, okay, there, there isn't anyone currently doing it. I don't, you know. <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't really, in my opinion, change the status. It's just sort yeah, of I mean, a clarifying I, sentence, really. I'm for not going and making that for that one thing. If if you came back and said no, groundwater's not covered, and you know, then you know there was going to be more. But for for one sentence that is going to just state what is actually happening, I think for this where where it's so close to yeah. being done, I don't want to. I don't want to. So uh, I just want a clarification. On yeah, it. I mean. Uh, uh, my position is that if if you felt strongly about having it changed and David felt like it was a doable change with minimal impact, then I would say let's go ahead and do it. Um, if you're saying that you're comfortable I'm with comfortable. it, then it, <clears throat> that's fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know if there were any other questions that I could help out with tonight. No, I would just say that anyone, any moving forward, any of the ones, just add that language in. Maybe yeah, that it's, so this, is, <clears throat> and, and that'll actually happen. So this is um, language from the 2014 program, which is when we applied for the grant, and they've actually phased that out oh. going forward. Uh, but because it is what it is, you know, because that's the year that we got it, uh, which, you know. Yep, it's fine. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. So what, what we typically do in these cases is we have you authorize somebody else to actually sign it so that we have a little bit of wiggle room It'd for last-minute things. And in this case, it'll be Sam, if you're comfortable with that. Um, it, if you want it with this or any of the other ones, if you want to participate in the closing, you want to actively be, be part of it, we can orchestrate that. It's kind of a dance with all the different parties to make those things happen and with something relatively straightforward like this, we just ask you to authorize Sam or me to do it, yeah. and one of us will go and do that. So that's what we would ask you to do tonight. Um, for the more significant projects that are, maybe are a little more fluid and we need last minute decisions on, or you know things like that, it may be different. Um, but if you're comfortable with that, then you can do that tonight, and we can take it from there, and Sam will actually go to the closing. And mm -hmm. um, There's actually a fairly good process that's in place now for communication between this board and, and the conservation commission and, and i think we had a presentation on this yeah you did because right? i spotted in the audience right yeah, yeah. so yeah was it a year ago no it could have been that long ago 
ago. No, it wasn't uh, that long ago. Yeah, I don't think it's that far back, but uh, it's been it's yeah. been a while. Yeah. But usually yeah. that's a good opportunity to bring up. Yeah, and I think when we meet with the Conservation Commission, I mean, I think like groundwater, I, I, you know, yeah. make sure that they're paying attention to that stuff during the process yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Um, okay, so do you need a, a motion from? Us? I would I would suggest something like that. <laughs> you can read my chicken scratch. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that the Board of Selectmen authorize Sam Demerit uh, to sign the conservation easement on the Sweester property on Ledge Farm Road on behalf of the town. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Yeah, Thank thanks you very David. much. Thank appreciate you. It. Appreciate you coming in. Yeah, thanks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, we want to make All sure right. everybody's comfortable with it. So. Will we see you a month from now to talk Harvey, or is that going to be somebody else? Uh, Dwayne, hi. Dwayne's yeah. coming on that. Yeah. So four weeks from tonight, uh, Selt will be back with the Conservation Commission. I think we're going to have both the kind of quarterly sit down with the Conservation Commission that the selectmen do and the uh, and a presentation on the, on the Harvey easement. Uh, and I'm not sure where the Conservation Commission is in their process, but they're going to come and ask for uh, funds from the conservation fund to contribute to that Harvey project. So you'll see all that in four weeks. Can we please, please make sure that the oh. <laughs> yes, I have one. It's all chicken scratch handwritten. So I, I sent it back for a updated okay. one for you. Okay, great. Yes, you will have it. We, we've hell or high water. We've asked in the past for the conservation commission for, for lack of a better term. We've, it's actually like a pipeline report that just essentially says what projects are they right. looking at and what's the what's the value of them so that we can see overall what they're looking at. And um, it, it, it's a fluid report, right. but that's one that we've asked as a tool that we have that we use that to guide the conversation that we when we meet with them on the, mm -hmm. for the quarterly meeting. Good. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yep. Take care. Good night. Cool. All right. Let's see, next was <coughs> social media policy. Yeah, so you have an electronic version anyway of uh, an updated draft that incorporates what we talked about uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're pretty much uh, Charlene's edits. I uh, didn't do much else. Um, we were pretty much all on the same page. Donna, you weren't here, but um, it's ready for you if you are ready for it. I'm ready for it. I mean, it doesn't really say much of anything. It gives us room to do a lot of things if we need to. Yeah, yeah. But right, it doesn't say that much. Um, on number five, I like saying that the town website shall be the official source of information. Um, social media may be used, blah, 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 blah. Um, and that last line, should we just say a link to this policy may be provided on each external site? A link to this policy. What do you mean by each external site? Everything that isn't a town website, it, it, the town website. So the fire department would put a link to the policy on their page. Okay. The rec department. Well, okay. So you mean town department? Yeah, any, any board, commission, town, whatever. And that- So any, um, okay. Yeah, and now we could just put it on our website, mm -hmm. and that yeah, that's what would I was be would be fine too. I, I think I, I, I think so. put it on the website yeah. with a link to the website I think so page. Too. Yeah, yeah. Do, 
I, I, That's the way I understood it. Do, do I actually say in here that a link to the town website will be? You say a link to the policy shall be provided on each on yeah. each external site. So that was what had me going. What yeah. what site are you talking about? Uh, what external sites are you talking? I was about? thinking Facebook or you know whatever the. Well, uh, and, and if if that's the case, then I would say may be provided, not shall, because then shall indicates that it should be or has to be. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking. But that you know what? That's probably not even necessary. I don't, I don't think it is yeah. Okay, so I'll just take that last sentence out. Is that? Yep. That's good. Okay. Yeah, we post some comments. No profanity, huh? It's all in the eyes of the beholder, right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with this. I'm fine with it. Okay. Yeah. So I'll take a motion to uh, adopt. The social media policy. I'll make a motion that we accept the social media policy as amended on item five. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Chris, for doing that. Yep. Lucas Pond Trucking. Lucas Pond Road Trucking. Yeah, Charlene asked to have this on the agenda. Uh, Northwood held a public hearing about. Uh, Posting their end of Lucas Pond Road as no through trucking. Uh, they held that hearing a, a week ago, and I couldn't find any minutes to see if they'd if they actually passed. finalized anything. Yeah. Um, when you do that, you have to have a hearing in order to create an ordinance for it. I don't know if they did that in the same night or not. Um, so that's what it sounded like. That's where they were headed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all the news I have on that front. Well, I think my thought is is if it gets if 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 the no through trucking gets posted on the Northwood side and it doesn't get posted on the Nottingham side, then it kind of like I, I, how, how do they enforce it? How do they enforce it? Right. And and so and I know that you know there's been other cases where there's been truck incidences in town on road so I'm just wondering if we should start to look at a no through trucking policy just you know in general for the town but <clears throat> specifically to Lucas you know if if they have agreed on it then are we gonna yep. do it there there isn't our end? there's nothing really it, it, if, it in, in effect does the same thing on our end their their action you know if it's if it's illegal on their end then it is and it doesn't really matter to us Depending. if they enforce it um how do they enforce it though if somebody comes from this end in nottingham and there's no sign and goes all oh the way to, in order to enforce anything it's got to have a sign so presumably what they would do is put a sign at the town line, line. and and a sign uh, at the, the other their other end of of right. lucas pond um so there there isn't a there's no enforcement role for us there's no um we we don't have a dog in that fight if they right. want to enforce it on there right. and that's that's they can do that and that's fine right. um that it's a it's not an easy enforcement um right. you have to watch a truck go from one end of the road to the other right. um and that's they'd, they'd have to do that either way whether the road ended in their town or our town so and then, um, i suppose it'd be like exceptions like the ever source or co-op where we're yeah, it's yeah. A, it's probably a weight limit on the truck yeah. is what a lot yeah. of other towns do, or the yeah. size of the truck, and yeah, it it you know usually it waves certain. Um, you can do it by weight, and you can you can create exceptions for you know obviously it's not through trucking if you're going to a right. destination on that road. You're, right. you're, yeah. you know, uh, what they're what they're apparently seeing is that it's being used as a cut through between to avoid the the light in Northwood. Going from 43 going around, to, they're just cutting from one state road to the other state yeah, road. They're going, they're going from 43 to um, to Route 4, basically, yeah. is what yeah. they're saying. We haven't heard anything on our end from anyone, but um, they, I think, repaved a section of the road. And which probably have a have a selectman that lives on the road. Uh, <coughs> which oh, which probably, <laughs> I was going to say, which probably increased the speed on the road. It might have, yeah. Uh, so. 
It's, it sounds like there's nothing for us to do on this particular incident, but you were questioning whether or not that we want we to should. take a bigger look at, is it an issue in town that there are other roads that we should be looking at? Yeah. yeah. Have you, Chris, had you know feedbacks or comments from anyone in town um, highlighting any particularly troublesome areas? Uh, well, the board heard from a bunch of people on Garland last year uh, about, right. remember that? Yeah. Um, the that's the only thing that we've heard about and it's uh we put a lot of energy into one particular trucking firm that i think was the primary cause of concern it's not the only cause of concern on garland but uh that was the primary one we have not been able to solve that have not been able to reach that trucking firm they've been non-responsive to a number of formal and informal approaches. Yeah, they, they uh, have indicated to me that they're not going to respond. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they stopped their truck one day. And well, what do you think, Charlie? You think we should, like, push for the, I mean... There's a lot of towns who have it, and it's usually in cases in which you've got road connectors from one state road to another, yeah. you know, or um, that, that a lot of towns, I think, have, have started to address it, and you've got trucks going down residential. It's not good for the, especially yeah. with weight limits. I mean, yeah. It's not good for the road, for sure. So it's like you, you take a look at where your connecting roads are and, and you know, just design it that way. And then that allows the, it really just allows the police to be able to stop the truck and say, hey, this is, you can't go, come here. Kind of warning number one, you know. Yeah, if you, if you want to go down that road, you, you should bring Chief Foss in to talk about enforcement. Um, we've done it in one, that I'm aware of, we have one road that has that posted on it in town, um, which was also a response to that same single firm. Yeah, and what that <clears throat> kind of created is, like you describe it, the, the whack-a-mole. Whack yeah. yeah, yeah. So should we start by looking at how many roads we're talking about and you know where we would be talking about yeah i mean i think it's a um a matter of just looking at the map yeah and you can identify a bunch of well we can ask chris to streets to, to do that yeah let's start by sure. identifying what those yeah and i i uh obviously if i if i'd heard from any other roads you know i would tell you that but we haven't heard yeah anything from anybody maybe it's just that they've Folks have come to accept it as part of living on Road X. I don't know, um, but yeah, I, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can come up with some other okay. possibilities there. Yeah, and, and then I, I think it does make sense to talk to Chief Foss about what are the, you know, what are the pros and cons that he sees from his perspective. And what's the process if you decide to do that? What's the process for implementing it? Uh, it's an ordinance, so you have to have a public hearing on it. You, you know, you post notice of a public hearing, hold a public hearing, okay. um, and uh, you would ordain it, uh, whatever it is, whether it's a weight limit or a speed limit or a, uh, any other prohibition. You have a lot of latitude on town-owned roads. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, you'd set a penalty and yep. uh, uh, posting guidelines, if any, that weren't already spelled out in standard operating procedure or law or whatever put up the signs and then you can enforce it okay all right sound good okay that's it on the agenda anything else no nope. i um just share so, so i went to that energy presentation that was over in lee um that i think paul kobe had gotten an invitation to or something and you, and you had forwarded it on um and it was really interesting. So it was a, a guy from a representative from the Hollis um, Energy Committee, and he was talking about a lot of what they did. Um, but <clears throat> a couple of things that I thought were interesting, um, they have like $120,000 in savings that they did just through you know, some weatherization, which I know that has been done here. Um, and then they also buy the electricity and this is the thing that interested me the most they buy their electricity um, through the regional planning so the regional planning um, commission got all the towns together in that planning um, 
and they buy the electricity through one of those bulk mm -hmm. buying guys yeah. and saved a boatload of money on electricity, which huh. I thought was really interesting. I don't know if Stratford has ever like looked at that or thought about it or I've never seen them. Uh, yeah, but that doesn't mean they haven't. But, yeah, uh, so, there's 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 just no regional buying of anything going on around here. It's, yeah, uh, I just don't see much of that. We we do it with. Uh, you know, some of our recycling operations are kind of aggregated in a way. It's more like a consortium than it is a group buy kind of thing. But um. so I thought that was really, really interesting. To you know, you'd have to get all the towns to to agree. Right. And he right. said it took it took a while for the the regional planning to kind of get everybody together in an, in an agreement on it. The other thing that he said is right now, um, solar hot water. There's loads of grants out there for solar hot water that nobody's applying for everybody's applying for the electricity solar so everybody's getting you know applying for those kind of grants hmm. but nobody's applying for hot water um, solar grants so I thought that was I never would have thought that they were completely separate things. this is the best bang for the buck here actually is hot water is a better investment generally than electricity so I thought that was really really good they got they've They've gotten most all of their um, their um, <clears throat> um, they did wood pellet boilers all through grant money, mm -hmm. um, and right now they're looking at a district heating system for the schools. They've got quite a few schools in the town, and they're pretty close together that they can do um, a district heating system. And they're also looking at putting in a um, hundred kilowatt. Um, not a hundred. It's a hundred, but it's not kilowatts. Megawatt. Yeah, I think megawatt um, solar farm hmm. on the that would also uh, supply all the electricity to to the schools. And school was the number one. The school system was the number one driver of kind of the energy costs and stuff. But it was a really interesting presentation. And you know, I mean. Starting up an energy commission would be something that I would like to see us do at some point in time. It's not high on the priority list, mm -hmm. but I just, so I went more kind of to listen and learn. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, you know, a couple of those tidbits, the bulk buy was, sounded like a really good idea. And the, yeah. and the solar hot water, <clears throat> you know, sounds like a really good idea. He did say that before you go for any grants, you have to like keep two years worth of data on what your usage is. Of, you know whatever you, so what you're either your fuel or your electricity and stuff um, so you need to have you know good record-keeping for that and I don't know if we we got all that yeah, yeah I, I figure <clears throat> to bills. right yeah it's all I mean, yeah. we, we can whatever we can't pull out of the electric utility systems automatically we can recreate through fuel by yeah. right. stuff it's I not, know it's not hard because this building did go through weatherization, that's what, why we got all the new windows, right? And, and that was and replaced all the lights and stuff. And that was quite a few years ago, I think. Lights was th three, four years ago. Windows were before then. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh. The wood, the wood pellet boiler is a neat idea because we we know this this boiler's. That's what I was thinking. Uh, yeah. It's on its way yeah. out. Um, I mean, it's no, it's fine. Don't, don't talk. Don't talk bad about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But if there was an opportunity, it's been a challenge. <laughs> if there if there were grant opportunities around that, I'll I'll definitely snip around on yeah, that because and, that, um, one. and with the wood pellet, um, the furnaces are like there's nothing to them as far as ongoing maintenance. So you save a boatload too on mm -hmm. kind of that ongoing maintenance. You still have to do like an annual clean out and you have to like dump the ash out. But um, you know, you basically get kind of a hopper feed outside that feeds it in so you buy you're, you're buying the pellets by the tons mm -hmm. and and then it just feeds it right in automatically and stuff but he's willing to you know share his wealth of information and lessons learned and everything was this a company or just a <laughs> he's a he's just a resident of the town of hollis yeah huh. and he's on the energy um and lee has an energy um committee and they said they'd be willing to to you know share what they do and stuff they've got like this book or something that we could use and stuff so interesting they were, yeah okay 
All right, anything else? Mm. Yeah. Sorry, Recycle Center. <clears throat> so I was at the Recycle Center. Um, we'll just be another 30, 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was at the Recycle Center, and, I, and I, um, there's no signs that say permit, like required. Like that, I could at the, really at the front gate. There's nothing. I no. There's okay. no, nothing I'll, that. I'll check that. That's so that might be that might be one um, thing that we might want to look at. And the other thing that I was because um, I went in with my car registrations and I'm like, oh, I need new stickers because it's April first. And so they said they're going to do it when you register your car. So we, we might want to just stop posting that on the cable, like. I think it is, but I'll double okay. check. And maybe yeah. it is, and I just didn't, yeah. uh, didn't notice that. I hadn't read it, but. Well, the permits in the future will be done when you. When, when you, you register your car. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's being done now. There. Yeah. 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 Just you're waiting for your month to come up. And, wait wait yeah. for your month to come up. But. I still have my rates to go for five years. Oh. Ours fell off. <clears throat> All right. Anything, oh, we taped it too. Anything else? Um. Are we going to go over priorities at some yeah, point? Yeah, you know, I was, just, I was just thinking about that, yeah. actually, as you were talking. And I think, um, I don't know what how heavy our next meeting is going to be. In two weeks, you have, what do you have? It's not terrible. We, could, we definitely have time. It, it um, is. What the heck is it? I don't know, but you got you got plenty of time. Okay. We can so, we're definitely do it. So we can kind of each come with our ideas as we talked about. And yeah, then, yeah. And then collectively agree to And then it. just, yeah, go through it. And, yep. you know, I don't know if at that we also want to kind of go through the, the um, look at, the, take a look at the master plan ones that are um, remaining as well. But, yeah. I mean, Mastin's going to definitely be the top. Uh, the Records Retention Committee is assembling as part of your meeting in two weeks. That should not take a huge amount of time, but that's what's on the agenda for okay. the second. Okay. Um, and uh, that's it. So I'll put that on the agenda for. Okay. Good. All right. I'll take a motion. Oh. Make a motion to adjourn. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.